Welcome to Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno. Since everything that's possible theoretically exists in the multiverse, what kinds of creatures are our quote-unquote neighbors there? Can you meet them? Can you get to know them so well that you can take pictures of them? Hello there, and welcome to the 321st edition of Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno. And those questions, rather intriguing ones, came from my co-host and partner in the paranormal, my dad. But before we welcome our very interesting guest, it's time, of course, for our weekly paranormal contest. So last week's question was, what is it called when the brain generates electricity to the point where it can recharge batteries or otherwise be put to use? Now, we thought that question was easy, at least easy to look up, but nobody got it right. The answer was electrokinesis. So this week's question is even easier. Who used the term exceptional human experience to define the paranormal? Get that right and win a copy of Footsteps in the Attic by my dad. And it's one of his most famous books, by the way. You know, the quote was not by me either, so there's one down. Uh, <laughs> Jerry Warner describes himself as a pretty ordinary guy who has uh, has been a student of the paranormal from an early age with a special interest in its relationship to religious belief systems. Jerry has worked as a freelance op-ed political illustrator and cartoonist for several Metro Daily newspapers in the Northeast, including the Providence Journal, where I used to work myself, and has uh, worked as well as for other publications and advertising agencies. He currently manages an upscale restaurant in the Pittsburgh area, and uh, he's writing and illustrating a, quote, densely allegorical book for my four-year-old son, Nathaniel, based on personal spiritual life lessons, observations, and experiences. Uh, and then he has in parentheses, the poor little guy, he has no idea what a madman he has for a father. I guess right, Ben can sympathize with that one. Yeah, yeah. Unquote. <laughs> Well, you know, Jerry, that's how Tolkien got started. Anyway, writing stuff for his son. In 2010, Jerry's personal spiritual odyssey led him to James Gilliland's uh, Assetti Ranch in Trout Lake, Washington. Uh, This has long been known as a place of spiritual retreat and education, but also as a site where many strange things can be seen in photos taken, primarily of UFOs. It was there that Jerry took the first of what would become a collection of over 2,800 photos taken in many places. Uh, The first... If you depict a feline creature that I immediately recognized as a species Ben and I have encountered in our paranormal, paranormal and multiverse work. Jerry contacted us, discussions ensued, and here we all are. Uh, Jerry's website isn't quite finished yet, uh, but you can meet him on Facebook. Uh, just look up Borderlands Photography of Consciousness. And if you are, by any chance, near a computer... This evening, you can see the photos on the Talking Points page at our show website, BehindTheParanormal.com. This is, of course, the most difficult of radio shows, uh, one that describes photographs, of course. Yes. But BehindTheParanormal.com, if you're stuck in your car in traffic in Boston or Providence, check it out later, BehindTheParanormal.com, Talking Points for this show. So, Jerry Warner, welcome to Behind the Paranormal. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Okay. Yes, yes, we do. Just relax. So, and co-hosting with us today is someone who needs no introduction, and it's our good friend, Rosemary Ellen Guiley, who has not called in yet, but she probably will within the near future, so introducing her now. So, Rosemary, whenever she gets here, welcome back. Okay. Uh, Anyway, Rosemary, of course, being a renowned paranormal researcher and author of nearly 50 books, uh, she's been working with Jerry, uh, as as have we, on what might be behind these photos. So, in any case, we'll... uh, let uh, Rosemary uh, into on the conversation when she calls in. Okay, uh, Ben, I guess you had a question to begin with, did you? All right, so, Jerry, when you were at this ranch in Washington, uh, what made you go out and just start pay- taking pictures? Did you realize what you were taking pictures of, like of strange things and stuff? Well, uh, he has an area out there. It, he calls it the field of dreams, but uh, by all, or by most accounts, there's a bona fide vortex there where uh, you never know what's coming in and uh, I was just getting ready to leave it was about 2 o'clock in the morning and um, for the most part I was just taking random shots with my camera and at one point you know it, it's kind of a a last minute effort to get something you know something of substance on my on my photos and I 
verbally said out loud, come on, you guys, this is my last night here. Show me some love. Uh, whereupon, uh, at that point, there was a succession of about four photos taken about a three or four minute period, it, which began with a red warp, which I didn't really pay any attention to at the time. I thought it was interesting, but uh, I just kept taking photos. And as I was leaving, I wanted to take one last photo of uh, the place where I was actually sleeping. And um, that was at the point where the uh, the feline photo showed up. But uh, to answer your question, I, I didn't really, uh, there was no impetus or, or anything like that. It was uh, you know, something that uh, just happened. I didn't. Uh, I, I hadn't really expected that much. Uh, let me just describe, because I know yeah, people sure. are listening, they can't see these things. So let yeah. me just describe a little bit about these photos. Most of them... Uh, and this feline one, as we call it, really stands out. It is um, a magnificent creature. Uh, and as I say, and I, I always hate to talk about this, but in, in the course of our paranormal work, we, do, we don't approach, as regular listeners know, we don't approach the paranormal in the way most people do. We approach it as uh, an experience of travel or, or simply experience of multiple parallel worlds that are around us all the time. You know, there are, there's nobody, there aren't any dead people. There's nobody's dead here. Death, as a matter of fact, is, is uh, impossible in the multiverse if you really look at it. And uh, so uh, all things being possible, according to quantum physics, at some point in the multiverse, uh, that interpretation of it, then creatures like this of all kinds can exist. And it is possible when worlds overlap, as they, which we believe is, is the reason for many paranormal experiences, uh, these creatures sometimes will manifest. We often don't know what, any better about what they might be, so we say, well, they're ghosts or they're this, and because we don't, we have a very narrow view of this. But in this, in this first photograph, and this is what really knocked me over, is uh, the, uh, almost a, a, a horse-like creature walking into the picture, it is uh, very sort of um, grayish or whitish in the picture. You can see right through it to a car that is behind the uh, the image. And the Jerry, so he must have been using a flash because the uh, license plate uh, is is lit up, you know, as it would be in a flash photograph. There's also very interestingly a statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary uh, behind this creature as well, behind the uh, sort of a beard like face. Now, when I, when I, now Ben can tell his own stories, but when I've encountered these in uh, meditation, in paranormal work, in dreams, in other um, formats, so to speak, they um, look just like this. They, they have feline faces, but almost the body of, of sort of horses with long necks and, or almost giraffes at times. They are intelligent, very wise. Now, th- that's about the only creature I recognize on these photos. Many of the rest of them look a little bit less defined, almost like smoke at times, and that's essentially what this is. But again, behind the paranormal.com, our talking points page, uh, when you get to a computer uh, after the show, you can, or if you happen to be listening on a computer, you can uh, you can see that. Okay. Oh, uh, Rosemary has joined us. Okay. Uh, Rosemary, welcome aboard. Hi there, Paul. How are you? Good. Uh, Jerry, can you uh, hear Rosemary? Yes. Good. Okay. We're all set. Jerry? Okay, we're just, we already introduced you officially, and we're just, I'm just finishing my question. And my, my question here before uh, Rosemary asks hers is, uh, Jerry, there is um, an unusual and lovely craft known as smoke art, in which smoke forms part or all of the subject of an artistic photograph. I'm thinking of the work of the French photographer Hugh Leglise Bataille uh, as, as a, one particularly good example. What's your response to people who might say you're just doing smoke art? Well, you know, I, uh, I I often get that question, and uh, naturally I would ask that question myself, but I should say that I'm very meticulous about the integrity of the photograph, and if there is even a slight indication that it could be breath of my mouth or smoke or anything like that, I, I delete it immediately. The thing that makes it many of these photographs, which actually to date I'm up to about um, a little over 3,400 images, uh, there's a very distinct uh, liquid membrane, it's, uh, kind of gossamer type. Uh, it almost looks vertebrae or, or some sort of biological texture and composition mm. to them. No, I've noticed that and, too. In some uh, way, yeah. And in many of them, there there are, there are geometric forms and repetitions of geometric forms that would never occur in smoke. And uh, you know, oftentimes too, there are uh, central there's a central luminosity to it or a projection of, of light or 
uh, energetic projection within them. And, uh, you know, I, I, to answer your question, I, I do understand people's initial reaction to that because a lot of times the, uh, the photos can take on a similar composition to them. But uh, all I can tell you is this is the real deal. Um, all of the photos are, are quite authentic. Well, I was telling Rosemary when we were discussing these photos that, uh, and I have never mentioned this before, uh, in our own place in Cumberland. Ben, you remember you were four when we moved out of there, but we had in the woods a little, we called it the lodge, kind of a little, very small cabin for meditation purposes. I, I do not remember that at all. Okay, well, I we had one. I didn't even know that was there. Well, take my word for it. You don't okay. have much remember. Oh. You're, you're too busy climbing trees. Getting stuck in them. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, I would go in there whenever I could in the evenings and, and meditate, and I had some uh, little place to burn incense and a little table and this sort of thing. And I came out of there one, one night. This is in the 1990s, uh, early 90s, and I, I came face-to-face, Jerry, with one of these feline creatures. Uh, I would have expected to be shocked or frightened, but I was entirely calm. It looked at me uh, for a moment. It, it turned and walked through the woods. I could hear its footfalls on the leaves, and then it disappeared. So call me crazy, call me irresponsible, but I mean, th- that's... Uh, You're irresponsible. That's what hap- happened. Anyway, I had no witnesses, but that's, you know, it was experience. And then when I saw this picture, I said, my gosh, this is one of those creatures. So anyway, that's my th- uh, thought well, on that. you know... Go ahead. No, no, I'm done. Uh, I was just going to say that when, uh, when I first caught the initial image of it, he said it, it, it uh, really uh, startled me uh, to a large degree, that, and it kind of stayed with me for a little while, but... Uh, you know, that was in October of 2010 and up until August of 2011 when I started to get, uh, to this point, can only describe as plasma photos. Uh, I had been taking quite a few images of orbs, which I should indicate also that I know it's a highly controversial subject. Yeah. But I do have, uh, yeah. I do have, uh, several images of the plasma emanating directly from the orbs. So right. uh, they're not all they're not all dust particles and things like that. Although you know, uh, I'm no, 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 that's true. You know, they've been seen but, with the um, naked eye. Yeah, yeah. There I are... can tell you at this point because I've gotten so used to it, I certainly don't take it for granted. Because every every image I get, uh, every shot I take is just as uh, uh, frankly exciting as the first one. But now when I take them, I'm not the least bit. Uh, uh, you know, it doesn't it doesn't uh, frighten me at all. In fact, it's uh, it's uh, it's you know, I get uh, quite uh, uh, elated when every time every time I take a photo. So it's just kind of I've gotten so used to it now that uh, you know it's, uh, it's uh, yeah. I, okay. I have a lot of fun. Put it that way. Yeah. Well, not, well yeah. let's uh, let Rosemary in here with a question. Oh well, I, I just want to say that I, I had the pleasure of spending an evening with Jerry recently. Uh, unfortunately, due to the weather conditions, we didn't have any results that night. But uh, one of the reasons why I'm intensely interested in these photographs uh, are is because they resemble other photographs taken by people who are researching instrumental transcommunication or, mm-hmm. you know, getting hard audio and visual evidence of the afterlife and other dimensional realms. And uh, they're not exactly the same, but they the shapes of the faces and uh, the way these entities are, are manifesting in the... Um, images uh, bear a strong resemblance to results obtained by other researchers around the world. So that's really, uh, when I first saw Jerry's uh, photographs, that's uh, what really piqued my interest in, in learning more about it. And uh, Jerry, I would like to ask you, you had mentioned that you got a different camera and uh, you've been able to get the same results, I understand, with another camera. Yeah. Um, so are you are you shooting like two cameras now uh, during the same sessions, or are you alternating? How are you going about collecting the uh, photographs? Well, no, I had actually used the second camera, which I, I should say is the, the exact same model. Um, but uh, the only reason I got the same model is because it worked so well for me. But I just I mainly stuck with one camera. I just got the other camera as a backup, and um, you know once I started getting the photos on the other camera, that was uh, evidence enough for me. So I just uh, primarily use the same camera that I started off with. People might, might question uh, some photographic issues here. Uh, many people don't realize that embedded within each... Are these all digital photographs, Jerry? 
Yes. Yeah. And that embedded with each, uh, di- in di- I should say, embedded within each digital photograph is metadata, as it's called, which includes when it was taken, the kind of camera used, and all sorts of little details that are pretty handy. It also will tell you when photographs have been manipulated. Now that that can mean, you know, with with the ordinary metadata accessible by most software, that, that could mean when it was resized. Even it doesn't necessarily mean it was fudged or touched up or anything like, like this. And uh, with at least the the unsophisticated software that I have for this, uh, I have not been able to find any evidence that these photographs were uh, tampered with, other than having been resized. So that, yes, and I should say too that uh, I'm I'm probably the the, the least uh, technologically proficient person that you'll ever know, so I wouldn't even know where to begin with that. But uh, you know, Rosemary said something that I got to thinking about, and that is, you know, at least to this point, I've been going to try to determine uh, who or what these things are, and, and you know, certainly there's more than one coming through at any given moment. Uh, Going by the reference points of whether, you know, for the sake of argument, angels, demons, you know, Rosemary wrote a book about the vengeful gen. Uh, it could be any number of things. And it occurred to me that this could be something entirely different than mm-hmm. any of the reference points in existence. So I, uh, to tell you the truth, I'm nowhere closer to determining uh, what I'm dealing with. All I can go by is, you know, kind of the, the authority of my own experience and certain patterns. I will tell you that. You know, they know exactly what I'm doing out there because they know they know exactly where my camera is. Oftentimes, I, I've laid down on my back and they're over my face. Uh, they're over my uh, body. They're down below my feet. And uh, and recently, they've been getting actually larger with more distinct uh, facial features and that sort of thing. I mean, some of these things are either you know six to seven feet across or high. I mean. It's yeah, getting, some uh, some of them are. Uh, again, I'm not too familiar with with with. I'm, I'm familiar with several of the species, but mostly with the, these feline ones. I know um, Ben's got a question here, but just before he does, when I had that experience in the woods with the, the, this this uh, lovely creature, I immediately went into the house and I said, "Huh, it looked familiar from from another source." And sure enough, in a book of Assyrian, ancient Assyrian art and Babylonian art, you have the the uh, uh, winged horses or lions almost with a human face and, and that's kind of what it reminded me of even though it had a feline face so i don't think these are any strangers to us at all as, as we often say on the show many many interdimensional creatures are very familiar with how to move or at least to um see into or or probe uh in even in some shallow manner into other other worlds beyond these uh um, electromagnetic boundaries so all right so well, i should say too that uh well go ahead i'm sorry Oh well, I was just gonna say like what you, you like what you were talking about like how like they know where your camera is and stuff like. Do you feel that they are trying to communicate with you? Uh, I I think that if they are, otherwise they wouldn't be there. But there's there's got to be some barrier to it. In fact, I I vocalized uh, many times, and I, I should say too that uh, just to set it in context, that uh, you know the the approach to this that I have is, is with with the utmost respect and humility and, uh, you know, gratitude, and uh, usually before each session and after each session, I, you know, not to get splitting theological hairs, but I, I do acknowledge God and all that is good in the universe, and I certainly thank God and, and thank uh, uh, whichever consciousness or entity it is for, for sharing itself with me. Uh, yeah, I think I they like are that. trying to communicate, uh, but they're, 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 the doors haven't been opened. Uh, in fact, sometimes... You know, I, I have noticed that in moments of uh, heightened emotion, whether it's through joy or, uh, and this gets back to your original question, uh, I, I've often vocalized basically saying, you know, without giving up my sovereignty or free will, uh, open me up, open the doors, open my eyes and my ears, uh, let's, you know, let's amp this up a little bit. And uh, when I've said that, they start blazing like crazy. Um, what blazing? How uh, you've we've talked about this privately, but perhaps you could explain to the listeners what uh, you mean by. Well, that that means they, 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 there's more frequency and intensity. A lot yeah. more energy, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I've seen the same thing. Uh, uh, it's difficult to. Um, I don't remember a lot of contacts with them. I know that they occur because you know you wake up sometimes, but there is a place on our on our property where I will sometimes sit. You know, maybe smoke a pipe. I know it's not 
the best thing to do. But uh, and sometimes um, they will turn up. They are what I would call from based on my conversation with the young boy who taught me so much in the 1990s, that little terminally ill child I often mention on the air, uh, high creatures, creatures of, of uh, great intelligence and high-mindedness, very gentle and very wise, but they also seem to be searchers just as we are, uh, yeah. almost at times confused about what's happening, anxious to contact, as it were, the neighbors, including ourselves, and um, we're kind of they're, they're as, they seem to be as concerned as we are about what's coming, uh, because it seems to be, affect the entire neighborhood, so to speak, and whatever that may be. You know, a lot of people say oh, 2012 or beyond that or whatever. Well, just to give you a quick timeline too, to, to keep it in context, when they initially started showing up in August of 2011. Uh, just to test it, I, I uh, uh, went to my house in Ohio, which is about an hour and 15 minutes away, and I verbally indicated again that, uh, you know, I would have to assume that uh, whoever this is is in independent time and space, and I'd be appreciative and grateful if they would manifest for my camera. And after about uh, anywhere between two and four nights, they started to manifest there. So I did it again in the middle of a golf course about a mile away from where I live. And they did the same thing. And so, so far, uh, just in my immediate location, uh, I've got them in probably about six or seven different locations. And I'm certainly not the only one that this is happening to. Uh, as you had indicated, the, this, this is, these, these, these things are all around us all the time. Now, what we're hearing and, from people uh, did, all over the place. Well, I did, there's a woman who uh, started liking a lot of the photos on my Facebook page, and she lives in Croatia, of all places. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I've... I had a friend her, and she's got about 500 photographs on her Facebook page. So uh, I think, uh, you know, I'm not the only one this is, this is happening to. Yeah. Uh, Rosemary, any observations here? Uh, yes. One of the things that puzzles me about the phenomenon is uh, that these entities, if we are uh, getting some communication here from, from entities, they haven't stepped forward and, and identified themselves and stated their intentions and purpose for initiating this kind of contact. And uh, in uh, other cases of the uh, ITC researchers, it was the opposite, where contact would be made and the entities would either voluntarily identify themselves and their purposes or be responsive to questions about them. So why these entities are, are sort of slowly revealing themselves, um, it's, it's a bit of a mystery. But the phenomenon does seem to be advancing and developing and uh, as Jerry has mentioned, also responsive to his own intentions. But I, I really would like to see them say, hey, you know, this is, uh, these are the cards that we're putting on the table here. Well, I, I see what you mean, uh, although we're, we're not doing that with, well, maybe, maybe you are, I, I don't know, and, and the groups you work with, but we, we, we never force communications because I don't really trust that. I mean, Ouija boards force communication and look what happens. Um, what I've done since really the 1970s is is to sort of just sit there, clear the mind, get into a meditative state without, which I find is a very defensive state. You know, one is very aware of anything neg negative that comes through, and just wait to see if if, if you if any uh, meetings, uh, chance meetings take place. And there's there have been some amazing contacts with uh you know f alternate humans and and these creatures as well. But I, I don't know about them. I don't think they know more than we do. I think, as I said, that's why I call them neighbors. I don't think they're any more knowledgeable about some things than we are, probably others. But the, the, the basic theme behind it all seems to be what is happening in our neighborhood. And the, one of the reasons for the, for the increased contacts is, uh, I think, a theory that I have sympathy for, which is that the electromagnetic activity associated with the galactic alignment, or whatever you want to call it, that's going on, or it has been going on, has thinned the electromagnetic boundaries that usually divide these worlds from each other. And you know, hence their appearance as smoky or ectoplasmic, as the, to use the old term, or plasma-type substances to the camera, because that's not actually what they look like at least not that I've seen. Uh, they, they look like they seem, they're perfectly physical in their own worlds, but when they come through these, these veils or you see them through the curtains, as it were, that's what they look like to the camera. Um, 
So, so, so that's my two. Now, whether that's correct or not, I happen to think that that is, but I don't know. Maybe someone else has other ideas. Yeah, I, I want to hear some other people's opinions on like how they um, interpret this uh, sort of phenomenon. Yeah, what's happening here? You know, well, I, I don't uh, think it's I, I a matter have... of forcing them to reveal themselves. It's it's just that they they're establishing regular contact here, and I think um, that really begs for some sort of identity. It's not just like, uh, you know, doing a random box session, which I do all the time. And a lot of times communicators come through and they don't give identities. You don't know who they are, but there's some sort of meaningful exchange. But we have here a regular conduit going on, and that's why I think that it would be um, good if if, uh, we learned more about exactly who they are and uh, and what's up. This seems to be a very purposeful communication. And as Jerry has described, it has uh, a very positive energy to it. Uh, there doesn't yet, at least, seem to be anything trickster going on. Yeah, no, I agree. So, um, yeah, I don't. I don't. It would it would help. In fact, it would help advance the whole process even more if if uh, we knew. Uh, at least something about who we're dealing with. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a commercial break on that note, and you're listening to Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno on WOON 1240 AM and onworldwide.com in New England's beautiful Blackstone River Valley. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Connie Lamond, inviting you to listen to Say La Vie, That's Life with short stories about local people. Could be your neighbor, your relative. Tune in on Fridays at 9.05 a.m. and Saturdays at 8 a.m. I'll let you guess who the person is. Owen Radio! Owen Worldwide! And we just wanted to say a word about Amazon Kindle Fire, the new device that is, was such a hit over the holiday season. Uh, still one ninety nine. And uh, counting, and we're going to be doing, uh, certainly there, there are some plenty of uh, opportunities to buy this at, at uh, online at Amazon.com and certainly at Staples. And this marvelous device will allow you to read over a million magazines, books, and uh, uh, newspapers, also apps, games, movies, and this sort of thing. And as we always ask our visitors and our guests, um, Rosemary, I, I, know, I know Jerry he hasn't written any books yet, but uh, Rosemary, your books are available on Amazon. I'm sure that among the 50-plus books you've written. Uh, uh, yes, they are on Amazon and also my website, visionaryliving.com. Sure, okay, that's it. But uh, certainly Amazon Kindle, folks, so it's well worth it. And, of course, for my books, uh, Faces at the Window, Footsteps in the Attic, Turning Home, God, Ghosts, and Human Destiny, and one of uh, interest to our local audience, maybe Rhode Island, A Genial History, is also available on that, used in several school districts in our little state. So Amazon Kindle is also available from only $79 if you don't want the color and all the bells and whistles. But one way or the other, check it out. It's the new thing in e-reading. So there we are, Amazon Kindle. Okay, and also before we go back to our guests, I wanted to just take a moment to refer to a charity that is uh, very, very dear to our hearts because it has been such a tremendous help to our little cousin, 12-year-old cancer survivor, uh, Libby Coolis, or uh, Lib Strong, as we call her in the family. Libby, Libby's the most uh, heroic little little guy in our family, I'll tell you. She's just terrific. Bay State Children's Hospital. Uh, the foundation is always uh, willing to accept any kind of help you can give and uh, you, it's, it's a long address here, so you might want to go to BehindTheParanormal.com, and right there on the page, the home page, is a link. Uh, you'll see a very colorful link on the right. All, all the, we have all the, the, the uh, stations that carry our show, and then in there, it too, is the uh, Radiothon WMAS from Springfield, Massachusetts. Check that, and uh, also there will be uh, a link to the foundation. So, so check it out, and we'll be talking more about this. Um, there's a beautiful, beautiful video. Uh, of Libby too, uh, talking about this and, and her experience, and that's also on BehindTheParanormal.com under What's New. So please check it out, and please help if you can, Bay State Children's Hospital. Whether you live in Massachusetts or wherever you live, they're doing marvelous work, and they need uh, they need some new stuff. They take care of the parents as well as the children. It's it's a great, great, great group up there. So let's get back to our conversation, and uh, certainly uh, to, to amplify what you've been saying uh, certainly both of you, uh, Rosemary and Jerry, is that these do seem to be seeking Jerry out, and you know, not just casual meetings such as we, je- we tend to have. So, Jerry, could you talk about uh, more about you know going to different places and having them anxious to communicate with you, as you've described to us? 
Uh, yes. In fact, I wanted to revisit something that Rosemary had said uh, about them basically not tipping their cards yet. Uh, I'm not sure that they're able to. There may be some, you know, they may be operating by different laws of their universe or however that works. Um, but, uh, you know, I do have to entertain in the back of my mind until I do know what I'm dealing with here that, you know, the fact of the matter is I could be very well deceived and, you know, it's way in over my head. Um, but I, that's not my sense of things. Uh, I don't think that they're threatening, and I have to go largely on the, um, you know, I'm a firm believer in the laws of attraction and uh, with the intentions that you put out, and I don't think that, um, based on that alone, that they, if there is something threatening. That's not to say that something threatening couldn't get through. But no, you're right. Yeah. Is, well, you know, I think that, after 42 uh, years, I'm, I'm pretty good. I, maybe I'm fooling myself, but I'm pretty good at sensing baloney when I hear it and, and negativity from any of these entities who claim or things that they don't claim to be. And I don't, I don't get one whiff of that from this. Even these photographs that look uh, somewhat ghostly and would usually be, you know, quote unquote scary, they just come across as very positive. I don't really understand it entirely. So, well, um, you know, I, uh, one of the things, and you had, uh, I was listening to one of your older broadcasts, and you had indicated something that I had been doing all along that, uh, you know, when it comes to intention, I mean, sometimes I've, I've just vocalized and it came straight from the heart. I said, you know, I don't know whether you're, quote, positive or negative or good or evil, but you've been gracious enough to share yourself with me. And God bless you, and you know what, I love you anyway. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it, it that may seem naive, but... Um, not I, at all. I, I, it, it, I, I, uh, it was something I felt at the moment, and when I say it, I, I, I feel it at the moment, and, um, you know, I, I just don't think that these are negative. Okay. Uh, Rosemary, any comment? I don't have any sense of negativity uh, with this either, and, uh, you know, Jerry wasn't out there, uh, you know, trying to get something to impress people. Uh, this was something for his his own spiritual and educational purposes when he invited the initial um, response uh, there in Washington State. And this has literally taken on a life of its own. And uh, when I looked at the photographs, when Jerry first contacted me and sent me some photographs and I looked at them, I didn't have any negativity um, feeling coming off the photographs. And uh, sometimes you can tell that from the photographs, mm. the the intelligence be behind it, uh, whether it's positive or negative. Uh, so um, that whets my curiosity even more in terms of, of what's going on, because if, if this is a positive opening that uh, has some beneficial purposes, uh, well, you know, it, it would be great if we could jump in even more. Okay, so I have well, a... It just, uh, oh, go, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say at this stage of the game, I'm just going to continue taking photographs, uh, weather permitting, every night that I can, and until the purpose or message reveals itself. And, uh, you know, I got to thinking that it could be nothing more, uh, just in simplistic terms, of whatever you want to call God or the universe, just saying, hey, Jerry, just want to let you know we're here, you know, and uh, just take it at face value. And some people, you know, their passion is to photograph birds and, Mine, uh, as of late, has been photographing interdimensional consciousness. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, I, do, I do have a question that I'd like to ask Jerry. Uh, uh, to date, Jerry, how has this experience been changing you in terms of your spiritual outlook or, or um, you know, your, your personal uh, growth and development, ideas, attitudes, beliefs? What's been going on for you? Well, that's a good question because uh, up until this point when I started getting these photographs, uh, I was on a, a certain spiritual path of, of, you know, basically trying to figure out the truth of things. And in order to do that, uh, I don't think anyone, uh, if they're on that path, can have any filters on. So nothing is off the table when, when you're on that path. And uh, but to answer your question, uh, that, that remains to be seen at this point. But... Uh, I can say that, aside from all speculation of uh, what the truth is, these photographs have, if nothing else, given me a, a valid indication of the otherness of existence, and that there is truly something else going on uh, behind the scenes that, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're essentially breadcrumbs the larger truth. And that's kind of what, you know, I, I should say this too, that's kind of what led me to 
um, contacting you and, and Paul and Ben because with a lot of these paranormal groups and researchers, there's a tendency to separate larger spiritual truths uh, from the, you know, quote, entertainment factor of what they're dealing with. And, uh, you know, I appreciate the fact that that's what, the, that's what you do in your work, and that's kind of what my mindset is, too. Mm. Okay, so have you had any other paranormal experiences during your lifetime, like ghosts, UFOs, Bigfoot, things like that? Well, it's funny you say that because there was on one occasion when I was uh, outside in front of my house and it was about 4 o'clock in the morning, and I wasn't really paying attention. I had just gotten done with a, uh, for lack of better words, photo shoot, and I was looking down on the ground, and all of a sudden the entire ground lit up, and I mean bright, where it's the point where it casts very dark shadows. And it, it startled me at first, but when I looked up, there was a ball of light uh, descending uh, behind the pine trees uh, on, on the property where I'm living. And uh, now these pine trees are at least 50 feet high, and so there is definitely something there, and I have no idea what it, what it was, but uh, it, uh, it wasn't any natural phenomenon. The reason we ask questions like that is because we, uh, unlike most, we spend years on cases and we find connection after connection after connection between all sorts, uh, geographically and otherwise, between all sorts of paranormal phenomena that most people wouldn't even think twice about as being connected. So maybe that's us. Maybe we you know, make it connect. But I, I think that's why we ask what, what, because your whole life is a unity and a wholeness, and uh, that includes your paranormal experience as well. So that's why we ask that. I think that the, uh, my sense is that this is at some point going to escalate, because whereas, aside from that initial picture of it, you said, uh, and I was taking those door photos, that it, that it escalated into what I'm experiencing now. And Rosemary brought up a good point when I was speaking to her, that this, this in and of itself could be another stage of escalation into something... Um, even more extraordinary. Yeah, now we, we can uh, guarantee you that things are going to escalate one way or the other. So anyway, um, did, one thing that I wanted to ask you too, Jerry, is how many species, for lack of a better term, have you or ha or have you identified in this this these what thirty four hundred photographs now? Uh, it's actually about thirty four hundred photographs. Okay. Now. Because no two of these photos that I've seen seem to be exactly the same, although the first few, uh, as I recall, it's almost like the, the, uh, the feline entity is walking into the photo almost. Yes, well, there, there's oftentimes I, I, I've seen imagery of, you know, and I want to try to avoid the, the looking at faces in the clouds factor. I want it to be right. self-evident. But I, yeah. I, I see things in these all the time. In fact, Rosemary commented about a picture uh, a few days ago that I hadn't noticed about what, what you could see clearly was the human form uh, emanating from one of the pictures. But mm -hmm. I've seen uh, human forms, uh, animal forms, and some things that are look to be neither human or animal, but they definitely have a, an organic or geometric distinct form to them. And I don't, as far as species goes, I don't really have a reference point for that, but there's there's there are definitely forms and figures in there that are unmistakable. No, I agree with that. Certainly, uh, well, in, in, for those quantum physicists who agree with the multiverse idea and have looked into it, uh, they will often say that the laws of physics may be different from world to world and the geometries may be different. And that certainly seems to come through in some of these photographs. As a matter of fact, the, the, the uh, location of, of the plane, P-L-A-N-E, in the sense of uh, where the surface on which they stand might be can be different. I'm thinking, Ben, of the Torrington house where uh, you, the creatures are seen out the window, uh, up, you know, sort of from different angles, and then the feet are hanging from yeah, the ceiling. Yeah, legs and, hanging from the ceiling walking yeah, across. So, yeah. so as in many of these photographs, they, the the, uh, the plane of, of um, uh, you know, upon which they seem to be standing or, or operating is, is somewhat different. So uh, that's just a, just a thought. So I have a really quick question for you, Jerry. Um, do you ever get like like pictures like, that aren't smoky? Like you get like just you can just see like figures plainly, like different colors, things like that. Uh, occasionally, but uh, it was brought to my attention uh, actually by 
uh, Michael Rombacher that uh, oftentimes when you see the the, uh, the colors in there, it could be nothing more than as you uh, shine white light into a prism, and then it just refracts different colors. Uh, but uh, I don't know that the, the the colors have any mean meaning to them. But uh, there's there's definitely red, white, uh, orange, yellow colors, and many of them. But I don't know what the significance is. Yeah. Any. Well, that brings up the question. I, I, I want to give Rosemary a chance to get in here, too. But just before, uh, I have a couple of, of just technical photographic questions. Uh, having learned photography at the taxpayer's expense in the military, uh, do you always use a flash? Yes. Okay. Do you um, set the camera? I know they're all digital. At, at any particular f-stop or you know things you can do with modern digital cameras? Or is it all always well, automatic? Uh, uh, in fact, what I do is uh, on my camera, which is a uh, Canon PowerShot SD fourteen hundred. That's what I have. Yeah. When you when you press down the um, just the focus where it shines the light uh, without actually taking the photo, that's what I do. Basically, I shine it in the air around different areas of, of where I'm standing until they start to manifest. Okay. And that's how I know when to take the picture. Have you ever used time lapse? No. Okay. All right. Basic question. Okay, Rosemary. Um... Any observations or questions? Uh, Jerry, have you <clears throat> excuse me? Have you put together any sort of um, plan for uh, advancing the the photographic results with uh, different kinds of experiments? Um, not with this. Uh, you mean with equipment? Equipment or um, times of of day or night or intention setting? Or maybe use of video. Uh, uh, I, I haven't used any video only because I haven't, uh, I'm sure there's video cameras out there, but I haven't come across a video camera where I could use the same technique of uh, uh, shining the light. But uh, to be honest with you, I, I haven't really looked. But I have done experimental things um, just to, for the sake of cause and effect. In fact, I was telling Rosemary not too long ago that, uh, you know, uh, not only in heightened states of emotion, but when I either sing or hum, they manifest. But the other night I was outside and I started whistling. And up until the point where I started whistling, they were, you know, there was a, a repetition, a routine of them manifesting. And when I whistle, they don't, they don't show up. That's funny. I was just I going don't. to ask that. Have they responded to music, or oddly enough, have they? How do they respond to bells or chimes? I haven't tried bells. What's that's that? A good idea. Uh, you oh, you haven't tried bells. No. Okay. Yeah, I would. Uh, yeah, let us know about that. Maybe a Tibetan singing bowl. That's always fun. Yeah, those are beautiful. <laughs> the uh, now now I don't know, Ben. You are the real shamanic kind of guy around here. What uh, around these parts? Does it does, does this um, resonate with any of your own experiences in the cosmic journeying, so to speak? Well. It does drive with me, yeah. I mean, this this kind of stuff has happened to me before, but I'd probably say you'd have more experience with it because you've been around longer, for one, and, um, well, because you're older than me, and two, you actually have time to sit out in the yard at night, whereas I don't. I'm usually you're, talking, you're talking to me. Yes, I'm talking oh, to I you. Oh, you're talking to you. Well, I am older than you, no question about that. Well, yeah, Jerry's yeah. older than me, too. I'm pretty sure everyone who's on the line right now is older than me, but, um... No, it, it makes it makes a lot of sense. Like what you what you're saying. I mean, music is very important to a lot of spiritual things. It's humming, say, humming and singing stuff, whistling. That kind of that's kind of weird though. I never, I you'd you'd expect that to attract them as well. But uh, to each his own, I suppose. But um. Yes, and they they had actually done that several times where I I whistled for about two or three minutes and then stopped whistling and then they showed up and I started whistling again for another two three minutes and they didn't show up. So, um, oh, that is really I'm not interesting. sure what to make of that, but yeah, I, I'd keep it. I think, I think the, uh, you know, whatever whatever uh, message or meaning or purpose that, that there may be, I, I just have a, a, a sense of it that it's going to come through in an uh, organic way, whether it's through dreams or, you know, maybe there's a blockage spiritually that I have that needs to be opened up, and it's just a matter of time. I wouldn't go searching. For a meaning, if there is a meaning, let it come to you, which I'm pretty sure you know. But don't analyze, don't overanalyze, just if something happens, accept it. And just keep going on with it. If there's something that they need to tell you, let it happen. And it's, that's like, that's like the base, like, 
I wouldn't say the basics. That's like what the main thing is. If these things are trying to communicate with you, just relax, let it happen. Don't like force them to talk to you. Don't be like, I want to know. Like you run up to someone on the side of the road and are just like, I want to know what you have to say to me. And they're just like, I don't even know who you are. That sort of thing. <laughs> it, it's it it's like dealing with people basically because they're just other types of people. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I should mention, too, before I forget, I, I do want to acknowledge Rosemary for all this because uh, she her counsel has been indispensable. Uh, she's been in constant communication with me, and she's been very gracious with her, her time and her insight. And uh, she's helped to clarify a lot of things um, just simply by a process of elimination. Uh, so I'm, I'm very grateful to you, Rosemary. Thank you. She's a good lady. You're, she's, Thank you. I'd have her by my side any time. Yes. So I as well. Yes. So uh, I just wanted to just mention, too, that uh, on the basis of physical evidence, uh, I remember, of course, my experience, that first one, hearing the, the creature walk away, you know, disturbing leaves in our physical world or whatever, and then disappearing. Uh, I would, um, in the, as, as you continue to have the spiritual experience, I mean, if you happen to notice any physical evidence, uh, it certainly can't hurt because, you know, we believe these are other physical worlds. And uh, Rosemary may have her own insights on that. But, uh, you know, I, I kind of look around, you know, if you have a chance, you know, footprints, uh, any kind of other evidence. Uh, they're, I mean, they find fur from Bigfoot, and some people think that's a shapeshifter or an interdimensional creature. So, hey, who, you know, who knows? A wear foot. Yeah, so. Well, you know, what I find interesting is uh, just on one uh certain moment when I was up at East City, I got that one, uh, pretty much the granddaddy of the photos, and yet I've taken 3,400 photos, and I haven't gotten one that, that's, that, that is that distinct yet. That's a beautiful shot. So. It doesn't look like smoke. <laughs> yeah. So, right. uh, so Rosemary, um, any further thoughts? Oh, I'd like to ask another question. Jerry, have you noticed any bleed-through of phenomena into other areas of your life, uh, like things going on in your house or uh, visitations or uh, attempted um, communication through dreams or intuition, anything like that, or is it uh, confined right now to the photographs? It's confined to the photographs, but, uh, you know, uh, that gets back to one of the things that... Uh, you had suggested, and actually Paul had too, is pay attention to my dreams. And uh, I've been trying to, but I, I forget many of them. But I haven't noticed a bleed through in, in any other area of my life. And I kind of begs the question back to the earlier point of, you know, whether they're positive or negative. And as I understand it, if something is uh, negative, you'll either experience health problems or things going wrong in your life or that sort of thing. And there's been nothing that's uh, out of the ordinary other than, you know, just normal mistakes or things uh, that can be attributed to my own folly or that sort of thing. But there's no, been no patterns of any aberration uh, in the rest of my life. The hallmark of these creatures, in my experience, of the higher creatures around us, so to speak, is that they are, are, are really two things, gentleness and respect. You know, and we're always saying in the show, respect is everything. It's in a way, it's even more important than love. I mean, it's not more important, but I mean, you can't have love without respect, and and uh, that seems to be the hallmark of these creatures, which is why they come across so positively. And when that is absent in any kind of contact, that's when the red flags go up for me. But certainly, everything you described seems to be uh, characterized by respect and gentleness. They never force their way in. That, no, they haven't. Yeah. And okay. uh, yeah. go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just, it's just an observation. Um, so uh, I would, uh, I don't know, have to concur with Ben. I wouldn't um, plan a next step. I would let it continue to happen. I'd let it come of its own um, volition or whatever it may be. Obviously, you have been singled out for some purpose. Uh, we might. I don't want to get into right now what I think that purpose might be. But um, that that will reveal itself as as uh, as time goes on. Um, again, I just refer to the website again behind the paranormal dot com uh, for everyone to check out the photographs on our talking points page for this show, and also uh, tell us about your upcoming website and your Facebook page, Jerry, where people can see the photographs as well. Well, the Facebook page is called Borderlands Photography of Consciousness, although the website itself will just be called uh, Borderlands of Consciousness, which 
uh, that phrase has actually, I, you know, it just occurred to me. And uh, but when I did a search on it, uh, I, I think Carl Jung had uh, uh, basically coined that phrase, which is kind of interesting because I have um, uh, incorporated a lot of his uh, philosophy into my own personal spiritual path. So, mm, yeah, yeah, he's uh, an interesting guy. Yeah, and Rosemary, uh, wh- where would you like to see this go, and, and and where does this mesh with your own experience? I haven't uh, been able to obtain too many dramatic photographs myself, uh, but I do work with other researchers who do, and I'd like to see where this fits into a bigger picture of uh, broadening communication. I do think we're seeing um, thinning of the veils, more openings. I think you alluded to that earlier in the hour. I'm certainly seeing it in uh, the reports that I'm getting from entity contact experiences uh, and uh, phenomena going on uh, in various areas. So this may be part of a much bigger picture, and if it is, it will fit into some sort of pattern of communications. Uh, so I would like to keep monitoring this, and I'm grateful that Jerry keeps me uh, pretty up to date on developments um, to see where we can start making sense of this not only for just what's going on here with Jerry, but also as part of a much bigger picture. Certainly. Well, very well put, and uh, let's all let's all keep in touch, certainly, and we'll keep the listeners informed on, uh, on what, what is happening here. And, Rosemary, too, why don't you uh, take just a second to tell us about your books and your website and where people can find out more about you. Visionaryliving.com is my main website, and I have a library of articles uh, from a lot of my books and topics that I research posted there. I have a bookshop with a lot of my books available. My second site is called JinUniverse.com, D-J-I-N-N Universe.com, and that features a um, major area of research for me in the past several years, the activities of the jinn behind uh, entity contact experiences and a lot of our paranormal phenomena. Yeah, that I'd and, like to talk uh, about first. West- Westerners need to be more educated about them. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more, Absolutely. Okay, folks. Well, I guess that's uh, what do we got, Mr. Producer? Uh, we have about. Okay, that's good. Well, ben, Ben's our producer tonight. So, well, I want to thank you both for being with us, and uh, we're definitely going to do this again because this is a. I think this is an important sort of tip of the iceberg kind of topic. Yes. And we will be in touch off the air. And thank you both very much. Thank you. God bless. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Very good. Okay. I think we probably have time for one email here. And uh, we'll try and make it a quick one because we haven't got that much time. Let's see. Here's, uh, this is from Dusty Bryan. says we can use his full name. Just says somewhere in the USA. Okay, so Dusty writes, uh, Hi, Paul. Until I read your passages online, I thought I was alone in thinking that death doesn't exist. And I appreciate you uh, since my brother killed himself in 2005. I'm alone, and also I am in my bedroom surrounded by orbs that have been uh, proved to be so. I am very uh, scientific, egoless, and a humanitarian, so I would love to know how to communicate to these entities um, uh, better. And my question is just that. And again, with a hearty thanks to your progressive thinking, uh, pretty rare in this verse I'm finding... Thanks. All right. Well, I guess the question in there is orbs and how to communicate with them. But uh, I think if you listen to the show uh, all the time, Dusty, you find out that there there are two things here. We don't know what orbs really are. I have a lot of suspicions, given my experience with them and and the way they act. But I'm also very um, concerned about assumptions. I don't think we can assume that these things, these orbs, are creatures of any kind or spirits or anything like this very often when they come out in photographs people go whoa here they are you know and they're all excited and uh, they couldn't be dust particles or whatever but i think uh i'll probably have to contact you uh privately on this because it's um i don't think you should try to communicate um deliberately with these things uh, I know we've been talking about that tonight, but I'm, I'm going to talk to you off the air about this because it's, it, it, it is a bigger subject than we might suspect. Okay, we're, we're almost down to the wire here, so we're going to have to continue. Uh, well, so many thanks to our producer, none other than Ben, who's been running the board the last two weeks, did, did a fine job tonight. 
And we'll see you next Monday, February 27th, right here on WON, 1240 AM and ONWorldwide.com, when Ben and I will welcome investigative journalist and UFO expert Larry Lowe for a discussion of space and consciousness. And on our regular CBS edition on CBS, uh, February 26th, or on Sunday, I mean, on February 26th in Boston, Pittsburgh, Detroit, and Seattle. We'll host a roundtable discussion about alien abductions with three well-known people who say they actually were abducted. Uh, Whitley Strieber, as in the movie Communion, played by Christopher Walken. Uh, Travis Walton, as in the movie Fire in the Sky. And Thomas Reed. And nobody has made a bad movie about him yet, but I believe there is one in the works. I believe so. Uh, okay, well, I think we're going to just drop it there. We'll have to leave our quote for... No, we have, Next, time. we have time for the call. Yeah, okay. All right, I can find it here. Raul Dahl, famous author from Britain, a person who has good thoughts cannot ever be ugly. You can have a wonky nose and a crooked mouth and a double chin and stick out teeth, but if you have good thoughts, they will shine out of your face like sunbeams, and you will always look lovely. Thanks for joining us on a great cosmic journey, and we will see you next time. Return to this radio frequency 167 hours from now for another edition of Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno.